Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, we welcome everyone for this uh, worship service and we pray that uh, God is going to bless everyone, those who are attending and participating in this uh, uh, worship service. You know, when, uh, when uh, uh, Sumad was sharing from the Psalms, I was thinking, and he was just, I mean, uh, speaking something about, uh, uh, about us. What was that, you know? Uh, when we were uh, coming from India to America, we were not knowing uh, what is going to happen and where, which is the place that we are going to uh, minister for the Lord. But uh, we trust in the Lord. And uh, uh, that is true that, you know, whenever we trust in the Lord, uh, when we put our complete trust in the Lord, uh, there is no doubt at all. God is able to provide the, the things and the, the, the blessings for us, I mean, wherever we go. So this is what uh, we understand from our, our Christian life because we are, in a, we are in a Christian journey. So this morning also, let us all trust in the Lord and uh, let God's presence be upon every one of us uh, when we are, I mean, uh, in, a, in a Christian journey. So this morning, thank you. And uh, once again, let us come to the presence of God. Once again, I, uh, I wish uh, all, the, all the blessings upon all our mothers. Happy Mother's Day. This morning to all the mothers of our church. Amen. May God uh, bless all of you uh, in the coming days and uh, uh, keep you all under his mighty wings. Hallelujah. So this morning we are coming to the presence of God and uh, uh, let us turn our attention uh, uh, to the, the, the Bible and let us listen from the, from the word of God this morning. You know, the topic that uh, I would like to preach about uh, for today's message is assurance of assurance of spiritual blessings through the blood of Jesus. Assurance of spiritual blessing uh, through the blood of Jesus. Amen. So, as a matter of fact, I think uh, uh, last month I already preached a sermon on the on the uh, topic called uh, the power of the blood of the Passover Lamb. Amen. But uh, it was it was like the uh, uh, blood of the Lamb as the spiritual weapon. Uh, victory over the devil, complete protection and provision of the deliverance and protection from the judgment of God and the blood of the lamb as a sign for the house of God's children. So all those portions we were just discussing uh, from the Bible, different parts of the Bible. And we know that, I mean, and most of the poems were regarding the blessings that we receive from the Lord while we are living in this world. You know, in that message, most of the points that uh, I was explaining that was related to the to the to the physical protection or provision or uh, uh, the, the the blessings which we are receiving from the Lord when we are living in this world. That is true. That we have the physical protection and provision by the blood of Jesus. Now, so when we are living in this world, we have the protection and provision. I mean, uh, of God by the blood of Jesus Christ. That is true. But at the same time, we should understand the children of God are not of this world. Rather, we are the members and citizens of the heavenly, I mean, heavenly kingdom. I mean, we should, we should understand one thing, that the children of God are not of this world. Rather, we are the members and citizens of heavenly kingdom. So we are not only supposed to, supposed to enjoy the, the, the holy pleasures, but rather we must be always aware about who we are and to which kingdom we are belongs to. Most of the time, the people of God, they are not aware about who we are and to which kingdom we are, I mean, belongs to. So that, that's, a, that's a great mistake that we are doing. This morning, I would like to, I mean, I mean, uh, speak something about not only the worldly protection or the, the, the physical protection or provision that we are receiving from the Lord every day, rather than we are supposed to always think about who we are. And we have to understand we are the citizens of the heavenly kingdom. I mean, and we are the members of the, I mean, heavenly kingdom. So we are not supposed to enjoy all the pleasures of this world, but we are supposed to look to the Lord and asking and seeking for what is the spiritual blessings that God wants to do. I mean, I mean, give everyone's life in this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So knowing that the physical blessing that we receive here in this world will not reach you to heaven. So the physical blessing that we have today will not reach you to heaven. But the but there are many spiritual blessings through the blood of Jesus, which will help us to get into heaven. 
I mean, you know, sometimes we think that, okay, all the physical or material blessings that uh, we are receiving from the Lord today in this present world, that we, we think that that will reach us to heaven. Never, never. All those physical blessings or the material blessings will be, I mean, will be over by this world itself. But we are not looking for all this, I mean, enjoyment or the pleasures of this world, but always we are supposed to look for the Lord for the spiritual blessings through the blood of Jesus, which will help us to get into heaven. So we must have the assurance about the spiritual blessings through the blood of Jesus. I mean, we must have the, the, the assurance about the spiritual blessings, uh, I mean, through the blood of Jesus. There are many, uh, uh, many, many spiritual blessings that uh, uh, let us think about uh, only a few things, okay? You know, when you, when you read Bible, we understand there are many, uh, many spiritual blessings that we are uh, able to receive uh, from the, uh, through the blood of, uh, uh, through the blood of the Jesus Christ. At the same time, we will be, I mean, thinking only a few points or a few things from the Bible for today's meditation. I mean, number one. So we have the salvation and eternal life through the blood of Jesus Christ. We have the salvation and eternal life through the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, when you read John chapter 3, verse 16, it says that, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believers believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So I would like to, or I, I'll be reading, uh, I myself will be reading the I mean, Bible verses because uh, I want uh, to just to save the time. Okay, so I would like to read the verses and uh, you can just look into that verses. Okay, so uh, uh, I mean, uh, John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Hallelujah. It says, God gave his son. God gave his son. So sending Jesus to this world with a purpose, saving the sinners and offer them the access to eternal life. I mean, why God the Father sent his son into this world? It was, it was with a purpose. It was with a purpose of salvation and eternal life. You know, it, it was, I mean, it was to, it was to, I mean, save the, the sinners, okay, the sinners, and or to also to offer them the access of eternal life. Hallelujah. So in order to do that, the body of Jesus, I mean, had to be broken and his blood had to be shed on the cross. You know, we have to understand that, you know, in order to save the people, in order to save the sinners, in order to give us, in order to give us the access to the eternal life, God, Jesus Christ had to, I mean, his body has to be, I mean, I mean, I'm broken on the cross and his blood had to be, I mean, shed on the cross. Hallelujah. So God does not want anyone to perish, but to have salvation and eternal life. Hallelujah. So we should know, can, how can a person be saved? You know, when we are talking about, I mean, the, the, the spiritual blessing, uh, that we are getting through the blood of Jesus Christ. The first point is the salvation and the eternal life through the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, so then we have to understand how can a person be saved? How can a person be saved? You know, you know when you read Romans chapter 10 verse 9, Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says that, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is what we understand from Romans chapter 10 verse 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is the Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you will be saved. I mean, so we should have the experience of accepting Jesus as a personal Savior and our Lord. Hallelujah. So this is what we understand about, uh, I mean, attaining the salvation and the eternal life for a person. Amen. So we should have the experience of accepting Jesus as our person as Savior. You know, many of the people, most of the children of our families, they did not have that experience of accepting Jesus as their personal Savior. They might be, I mean, born into a Christian family or Pentecostal family or something, but they did not have that experience of, I mean, accepting Jesus as their person as Savior or Lord. Simply, they are just continuing in the family and just attending for the I mean, uh, meetings and attending for the Sunday services and all. That's all. They're not thinking about how can I have a, a, a personal encounter with the, I mean, Jesus Christ. 
you know, I was listening a, a sermon of the pastor. Uh, he was uh, uh, preaching about uh, the, the, the difference between between the earlier time and the present time. That means how the people are getting saved, or how the people accept Jesus as their savior. You know, there is there is a, there is a there is a entirely there is a different uh, between the in, in the the earlier time and the present time. You know, the people uh, those who were accepting Jesus on that time it was different, and now. The, how the people are accepting Jesus and how uh, the people are doing the salvation prayer or something. So we have to think about that. That pastor was, I mean, just I mean, talking about that, that point. I was thinking, you know, he says that in the early time, after the sermon, the preacher will give an outer call. Okay, that was the system in those days. You know, the, 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 the uh, older people, uh, you may be remembering that, okay? Uh, maybe uh, the, the parents or the older people. I think uh, there are many uh, parents, I mean, attending. Uh, Ravi brothers' uh, parents are there and some others are there. So you may be remembering the, the olden days, you know. On, on those days, what, what is happening? You know, uh, the preacher will be, I mean, giving a giving a wonderful preaching. That will be a gospel preaching. Okay, that will be a gospel preaching. Nowadays, even though it is uh, it is uh, the, the label, uh, the, the what is the banner is the gospel uh, preaching, but uh, they are preaching something else. Okay, so now in those days, it was that the banner will be the gospel preaching or the convention or like that something. Okay, and the that will be the gospel preaching. So the preacher will, will be, I mean, ready to preach the gospel and he will preach the gospel. So what is happening after the preaching, after the sermon? I mean, uh, he will give it, uh, give an outer call and uh, saying, if anybody is willing to accept Jesus, you just stand up. Then he will ask to come forward. You just stand up there. And come forward. Then the pastor will tell him that you have to repent about your sin. When the person is coming forward to the stage, and he will speak to that person, and the pastor will say, "Okay, you have to confess about your sin and uh, uh, repent about your sin and uh, take away all the evil and fill your heart with Jesus." Okay. Then the person will start to cry and repent and confess about his sins. Then pastor will say. I'm going to pray for you and do not do sin again. I mean, this is the procedure in the earlier time. Okay, the person will come forward and the pastor will share something to that person, that person personally, and he will pray for him and he will say that you have to be surrendered in the presence of God. You are, you are accepting Jesus as your person and savior, and you have to be repented about your sin. And that person will cry, crying, crying, and he will accept Jesus as, as his person and savior. That is the system, that is the procedure of uh, I mean getting salvation for a person. But now, but later, later. The preacher is saying like this, the sermon, the, 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 the preacher or the pastor, I mean, thought, you know, if we do this procedure, nobody will come forward. Okay, this, I mean, now the, the pastors are thinking like that. Okay, if you if you do the outer call like that, and if you, I mean, call the people to the friend, they will not come. They are not, not going to come. So do one thing, let them stand there itself, wherever they are. So the pastor says, the procedure and they say okay let them stand there still wherever they are and let them accept jesus and after that later later the difference you know again the pastors will i mean tell them you can sit there itself wherever you are wherever you are lift your just lift your hands and accept jesus this is the this is the another procedure that the that the preachers are doing i mean but later nowadays nowadays what is happening you know you know, uh, they, you know what is that? Okay, the 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 it is it is entirely different. Like uh, the piece of paper will be uh, given to all, just like a follow-up card. Okay, the piece of paper uh, with uh, with uh, many columns and all, and it will be given to the people, and uh, they are just uh, I mean, reading it and just just doing the tick. It's a tick. Okay, just do the tick, and you are accepting Jesus as your personal savior. Hallelujah. So this morning. I would like to encourage everyone, you know, we are receiving the blessings from God and we have the salvation and we have the eternal life, but we have to think about how we are receiving the salvation and the eternal life. It is not easy to receive Jesus as your personal savior. When you receive Jesus as your personal savior, you will, I mean, really you will cry in the presence of God and you will be repented about your sins and you will be, I mean, repented, confessed about your sins and, I mean, bad habits and everything. And you'll, you'll be entirely changed. You'll be a person. 
I mean, you will be becoming a, a new creation, Bible says. I mean, that's what we understand from that. Hallelujah. So this morning, let us remember that we have the salvation and the eternal life through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is the first point that I just want to make with you. Hallelujah. And second point. Secondly, we have the redemption and forgiveness through his blood. We have the redemption and forgiveness through his blood. You know, when you read Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, it says, In Christ we have redemption and forgiveness of our sin through his blood. In Christ we have redemption and forgiveness of our sin through his blood. Most of the people, they do not understand what is the meaning of the word redemption. What is the meaning of the word redemption? You know, when we go to Old Testament, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 7 and 8 says, God says to Israel, I am the Lord who brought you out with mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of the bondage and from the hand of the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. I mean, so this is a particular verse that we read that God is saying to Israel that I am the Lord who brought you out with mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of the bondage and from the hand of the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Hallelujah. So we have to think about what is the redemption? So Jesus is giving us the redemption from our sin, from a bondage through the blood of Jesus Christ. Once we all were under the bondage of Satan, you know, it says here that from the, from the house of the bondage and from the hand of the Pharaoh, the king Egypt, king of Egypt. That means, you know, once we were all under the bondages of Satan, under the bondages of sin, under the bondages of uh, this world, but Jesus Christ redeemed every one of us through the, through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And through shedding his blood on the cross. Hallelujah. That is what we understand. When we read I mean, the Old Testament, it gives us a clear picture about the redemption. Okay, clear picture of the redemption. And, and when you read uh, the Old Testament, especially maybe uh, Deuteronomy or uh, Exodus or Leviticus or all those portions, when we read, uh, we understand from there. Hallelujah. You know, it is, it is like this, you know, the master had to pay the price to redeem the slave. The master had to pay the price to, I mean, redeem the slave. Without paying a price or without paying a ransom, the master cannot redeem a slave. Okay, so th that is procedure. That's the system in the Old Testament. So that's the reason, you know, when you read 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19 says that, for you know that it was known with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors but with the precious blood of Christ Jesus, a lamb without blemish or defect. Hallelujah. What a wonderful, I mean, I mean verse it is. Hallelujah. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold. The silver and the gold is a perishable thing. It's a material. It's, it's, it's a metal of, I mean, perishable things. Okay. But, uh, I mean, you were redeemed from the empty way of life and handed all down to you from your ancestors. But, you know, our ancestors gave us many, 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 many systems and the customs and all the rituals and all those things. But the Lord Jesus Christ, through his blood, he is trying to I mean, redeem every one of us from all kinds of ancestors, I mean, bondages. But with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Hallelujah. So the, the speciality of the blood of Jesus Christ is, I mean, it is, I mean, without blemish and defect. Hallelujah. So that is enough. The blood of Jesus Christ was enough to redeem the people and to give the forgiveness, I mean, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So to redeem us, he paid, Jesus paid the ransom that is the blood of Jesus Christ. Without paying the price, without paying the ransom, there is no redemption. Hallelujah. There is no forgiveness of our sin. Hallelujah. Even, you know, when we read the Bible, we understand that, I mean, and God, God said that okay, you have to, I mean, sacrifice an animal to get the forgiveness for your sin. So that is what we understand. Jesus Christ, I mean, gave and shed his blood on the cross and said, okay, I am ready to redeem you. 
I'm ready to redeem the people, the sinners. And so we have the redemption and forgiveness by his blood. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. I don't want to read that verse. Okay, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22 says that we have the redemption and the forgiveness of our sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. Third point. Third point. The, we have the fellowship with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. We have the, 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 uh, we have the fellowship with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. So I'm just explaining all those things within I a mean, few minutes because, you know, uh, we have a short of time and we will be discussing all these things. I mean, uh, later maybe I mean, in, in a, as, a, as an explanation. Okay, so here we can understand what are the spiritual blessings that we have received from the or through the blood of Jesus Christ. The spiritual blessings, not the physical blessings, but the spiritual blessings, hallelujah. So the, the third point is fellowship with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter two, verse 13. Ephesians chapter two, verse 13 says that, but now in Christ, Jesus, you who were once far away, have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen, we have the fellowship with God through the blood of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away, have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, we were far away from the presence of God. We were not supposed to get the salvation. We were not supposed to become the members of the eternal life of the heavenly kingdom. But only because of the blood of Jesus Christ, which is shed on the cross of Calvary, we are and we have been brought near. We have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ, and we have the access to I mean, enter into the presence of God I mean, at any time. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus, even though he himself was a Jew, came to save not only Jew but also Gentiles. This is what he understand. So now we have the fellowship with God. How? We have the fellowship with God. How? We received this fellowship with God. It is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus, even though he himself was a Jew, came to save not only Jew, but also Gentiles. You know, we, the Gentiles were far away, I mean, from the salvation and the presence of God. But we are brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We do not, do not have any, any relation with the, 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 the Jewish people. But God said, okay, I'm, I'm sending Jesus Christ and he will die for you. And he will, I mean, bring you back. I mean, he will just relate you with the Jewish people. There is no difference. I mean, for God, I mean, there is no barrier. There is no wall in between the Jew and the Gentiles. Everyone is same in the presence of God. Hallelujah. So we also get the, I mean, get the, the get the opportunity and the privilege to come to the presence of God without any barrier. Hallelujah! There is no barrier. I mean, between Jew and gender, there is no barrier. Barrier in the color. There is no barrier in the gender or something. Hallelujah! So everyone is, I mean, same in the presence of God. Hallelujah! So that that is what we understand from the the, the point number three, and we will come to the, I mean, fourth point. Fourth point. That is like this: reconciliation. And peace with God by his blood. Reconciliation and peace with God by his blood. You know, when you read Colossians chapter 1 verse 20, Colossians chapter 1 verse 20, through him to reconcile to himself all things by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Through him to reconcile to himself all things by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. So we have the reconciliation and peace with God by his blood. So this is what we understand from this verse that, you know, when you read Romans chapter 5 says, once we were enemies of God. So what do you mean by reconciliation and peace with God? That means we, we, we were not having any relation with God once. When we were sinners, when we were sinners. Okay, so but here we understand once we were enemies of God, once we were enemies of God, once we were sinners, once we were far away from God, but through his blood we are reconciled with God and we have peace with God. In Malayalam it says, Nirapichu, 
ദൈവം അവൻ രണ്ടു പക്ഷമായിരുന്നവരെ നിരപ്പിച്ചു ഹാലലൂയ റീകൺസലേഷൻ ഹാലലൂയ സോ റീകൺസലേഷൻ ഈസ് ദി പീസ് ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് ആൻഡ് വി ഹാവ് ദി ഐ മീൻ ക്ലോസ് റിലേഷൻഷിപ്പ് വിത്ത് ഗോഡ് ഹാലലൂയ ഈവൻ ദോ വി ആർ ജെൻഡേഴ്സ് വി ആർ നോട്ട് ജൂസ് വി ആർ ജെൻഡേഴ്സ് ബട്ട് ഗോഡ് ഹാസ് ഗിവൻ അസ് ദി അസ് ദി ബ്യൂട്ടിഫുൾ ഐ മീൻ ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി ആൻഡ് പ്രിവിലേജ് ഐ മീൻ ഫോർ അസ് ടു ഐ മീൻ ബിക്കം ദി ചിൽഡ്രൻ ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് ഹാലലൂയ ആൻഡ് വി ആർ ദി പീപ്പിൾ ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് ആൻഡ് വി ആർ ദി ചിൽഡ്രൻ ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് ഹാലലൂയ ദോ വി വർ എനിമീസ് ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് വി വർ സിനേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് we were sinners and we were i mean being away from the presence of god but we are reconciled with god and we have the peace with god only through the blood of jesus christ amen and fifth point fifth point we are justified by his blood we are justified by his blood you know romans chapter 5 verse 9 romans chapter 5 verse 9 says that we are justified by his blood but i do not know how many of the people are knowing the the meaning of the word justification hallelujah so we are reading in the, especially in roman chapter 5 uh, and 6 and 7 there are many occurrences which it, which we can see that again okay, when talking about the justification 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 so here we understand that we are justified by the by the blood of jesus christ to means justification is the action of declaring or making righteous in the sight of god the action of declaring or making righteous in the sight of god we know that we were not righteous in the sight of god no one you know romans chapter i think i, I forgot the verse uh, in in the book of romans it states that again there is no one righteous everyone everyone where i mean i mean sinned and they have i mean i mean uh, uh, made a short or they have fallen back from the from the glory of god hallelujah but at the same time i mean through the blood of jesus christ we became the righteous people now be called be called ourselves and god calls us that you are a righteous man you are a righteous woman hallelujah this is a privilege by i mean among my children of god and i mean brothers and sisters this is a great privilege that we have that we are the children of god and we got the justification and we are the i mean justified people and we are the righteous people hallelujah before 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 coming to christ we were doing all the unrighteousness and all the wicked things and all hallelujah but this is a great privilege for children of god that we became the righteous people only by the blood of jesus christ it is not only it is not because of our deeds it is not because of of our works hallelujah it is not because of anything that comes from our life but it is only because of the grace of god it is only because of the of the blood of jesus christ hallelujah and the sixth point sixth point we are sanctified by his blood we are sanctified by his blood let us read hebrews chapter 13 verse 12 hebrews chapter 13 verse 12 says that i mean you people are sanctified by his blood you know sanctification the word sanctification is entirely different from what we think about the the salvation or the forgiveness of or or the reconciliation of the peace with god or something it is entirely different you know sanctification you know this is the this is the topic that i was uh, i mean taking for the adult class you know what is sanctification so clearly it says hebrews chapter 13 verse 12 says that okay sanctification meaning to make holy sanctification means to make holy to be separated to be a saint and to be consecrated for a holy purpose hallelujah so sanctification so we are sanctified by the blood of jesus christ means we are made holy and we are to be separated from all the filthy things and we are to be the saints of saints of god and to be the consecrated for holy purpose hallelujah so when we read uh, uh, the the epistles we understand the the apostles and the and the uh, writers or their of the epistles they are calling the the children of god the members of the church the local churches as the saints of god the saints of corinth the church of corinth the saints of church of galatia the saints of i mean uh, church of thessalonia why what's the reason you know in our normal churches there are there are only separate people they they are known as the saints saints okay punnavalanma but we understand 
we all are saints in the presence of God only, only because of the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the meaning of the sanctification. Sanctification to make holy. So God made us holy through his blood and God separated us, separated us with a purpose and God consecrated us for a holy purpose. Hallelujah. So this is called the consecration. You know, sanctification is consecration or separating a person for a good purpose or separating a person for a holy purpose. You know, we are not supposed to be used for all the things, all the worldly things, but we are supposed to be the vessel or the instrument or the tool which can be used for the glory of God for the holy purpose. Now, when we study about the tabernacle in the Old Testament, you know, in the, in the Old Testament, the tabernacle, there are many, many, many tools and the instruments that, that, that they are using for the sacrifice. And in the, in the temple also, there are many instruments they are using, or the tools they are using there. Okay, or the vessels they are using. You know, those vessels or the, those instruments, uh, nobody is supposed to take those instruments for any other purpose. If they are using for one purpose, let, let it be used for only one purpose. Okay, so the, they cannot take it for other purpose. Okay, so that is called the sanctification. So that is already, I mean, holy. That thing is holy. That instrument is holy. Just like that, we are holy. And God called us and God made us holy people and righteous people and sanctified people. And we are separated from all the holy pleasures. Hallelujah. So we have to be, I mean, I mean, thoroughly thinking about, oh, oh Lord, we thank you for, I mean, calling me, oh God. We thank you for sanctifying me, oh God. We thank you for calling me as a righteous person, oh God. Hallelujah. It is only because of the, I mean, blood of Jesus Christ that we received the sanctification. Hallelujah. And the seventh point is like this. We have the access to enter into the throne of grace. We have the access to enter into the throne of grace. I mean, when you read Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 and 20, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 and 20, it says that, okay, we have the access to enter the throne of grace without any interest. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, in the, in the, in the Old Testament time, we understand only the priests or the high priests were able to enter inside the holy place or the most holy place. The, the normal people, they were not, they were not I mean, permitted to enter inside the holy place or the most holy place. Only the priests or the high priests. But today, what is happening? Through the blood of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have that access to enter inside the, I mean, enter inside the holy place and asking to the Lord for the blessings. Hallelujah. So we have that confidence. We have that confidence. The throne of grace is there. Hallelujah. It is called as the throne of grace. Why? Why? We are, when we are approaching to the throne of grace, there is availability of the grace. Hallelujah. So we have the grace in the presence of God. I mean, we have the grace in the, in the throne of grace. Hallelujah. So this is the great benefit that we are receiving from the Lord through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So this morning, this is the, this is what we understand. Only, only seven points I would like to, I mean, I mean, give you once again. Hallelujah. You know, we are, I mean, sanctified and we are justified in the presence of God only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So let us all, I mean, come to the presence of God with a, with a prayerful attitude this morning. Let us close the light of the presence of God. Hallelujah. We're going to, we're going to spend a few minutes in the presence of God with prayer. Hallelujah. Let's all close our eyes and let's all surrender our life in the presence of God. Hallelujah. This is the right time to think about, I mean, what are the spiritual blessings that, that we have received from the Lord through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We know that we have many, I mean, many blessings, the physical blessings or material blessings, I mean, protection or provision of, I mean, through the blood of Jesus Christ when we are living in this world. Hallelujah. At the same time, let us be aware about, let us be aware about I mean, what are the I mean, spiritual blessings that, that we have received through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let us apply the word of God in our life. Hallelujah. Let us apply the word of God in our life. Hallelujah. Our life is not to be, I mean, I mean, finished with all the worldly pleasures. Hallelujah. We are not the, I mean, citizens of this world. I mean, we are the citizens of the heavenly kingdom. Hallelujah. So we have the access to, I mean, enter inside the holy place 
praise and I mean pray in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Let us thank the Lord for giving all the spiritual blessings upon us. Hallelujah. Let us, I mean, let us I mean, enjoy in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let us give thanks unto the Lord for, for giving all the spiritual blessings for me, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Be blessed in him, God. Be blessed in him, God. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, hallelujah. You are sitting in your house, but you get, I mean, clap your hands and praise the Lord for a while. I mean, for giving all the blessings upon you in the past days. Hallelujah. Let us give thanks to the Lord. I mean, for all his spiritual blessings through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. During the hour, it is a privilege. I mean, before, but we thank you, we thank you for giving all the blessings of us in the past days. Hallelujah. Let's come to the presence of God. Let us meditate and think about the message today. Hallelujah. Let us meditate and think about the message today. Hallelujah. 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 Let us have that assurance about the spiritual blessing through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The blessings that can reach us to heaven. Hallelujah. The, the physical blessings or the material blessings cannot reach you to heaven. But the spiritual blessings that we were hearing from this message, I mean, that can reach you, that can help you, that can enable you to reach to the heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have the salvation and the eternal life. Hallelujah. We have the redemption and the forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. We have the fellowship with God, I mean, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We have the reconciliation and the peace with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We have the justification. We have the sanctification, I mean, hallelujah, through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we have the access to go to the throne of grace and confidence, hallelujah. So let's give thanks unto the Lord, giving all the spiritual blessings upon us in the days, hallelujah. Let's all surrender life to the presence of God. Let's meditate upon the word of God. And let us just, I mean, receive the word of God as a, as a spiritual blessing, I mean, for today, hallelujah. I request it. I mean, uh, we are undermined to lead us in prayer now. And the man he will be reading now. I'm mean, praying now. I mean, I mean, just, just meditate the word of God in the presence of God. And the is going to um, lead us to pray now. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Stotram, Stotram, Kartave, the Ame, Surya, Vidavi, Stotran, Jane, Hallelujah. The Ame, Yang, Kurinal, the Vasun, good out of the Anamite, and Nenu, and his Stotram, Stotram, Kartave, out of the Yang, like Kairi, Kartave, Stotram, Kartave, the Vasun, and the Kate to Anikra for the Maitu, Nenu, and his Stotram, Kartave, and the Vasun, Sadi to Hallelujah, Kartave, and Yara, the Pansa Hai to. They were very Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Young Aguin, Thank you. 
കർത്താവെ ഞങ്ങൾ ഈ ലോകത്തിന്റെ ദൈവമേ സൗകര്യങ്ങളൊക്കെ വേണമെങ്കിലും കർത്താവെ അതിനേക്കാൾ ഉപരിയായിട്ട് എന്റെ കർത്താവിനെ അറിഞ്ഞ് ജീവിപ്പാൻ ഞങ്ങളെ സഹായിക്കുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടി നന്ദിയോട് സ്തോത്രം സ്തോത്രം കർത്താവെ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് തന്ന ദൈവമേ ആ ദൈവമേ പ്രഷ്യസ് ബ്ലഡി കൂടെ ഞങ്ങൾ തരുന്ന നീതീകരണത്തിന് വേണ്ടി സ്തോത്രം കർത്താവെ അങ്ങയോടുള്ള കൂട്ടായ്മ തരുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടി സ്തോത്രം കർത്താവെ ഏത് സമയത്തിന് കർത്താവിന്റെ സന്നിധിയിൽ വരുവാൻ സ്തോത്രം സ്തോത്രം കർത്താവെ ഓരോരുത്തരും ഞങ്ങളെ ശുദ്ധീകരിച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടി സ്തോത്രം ചെയ്യുന്നു സ്തുതിക്കുന്ന കർത്താവെ അവിടുന്ന് എത്ര നല്ലവനാണ് വിശ്വസ്തനാണ് ഹാലേലുയ്യ എത്രയോ ആൾക്കാർക്ക് ദൈവമേ ഈ ദൈവമേ ഈ മഹാഭാഗ്യം ലഭിക്കാതിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ എന്റെ ദൈവം ലഭിച്ചതിന് വേണ്ടി സ്തോത്രം ഞങ്ങളെ താഴ്ത്തിയേൽപ്പിക്കുന്നു ഹാലേലുയ്യ ഹാലേലുയ്യ ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഹൃദയ കവാടങ്ങളെ തുറക്കണമേ ദൈവമേ ഞങ്ങളുടെ ആത്മീയ കണ്ണുകളെ തുറക്കണമേ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു ഹാലേലുയ്യ അവിടുത്തെ തേജസ് അറിയുവാൻ അവിടുത്തെ മഹത്വം അറിയുവാൻ ഞങ്ങളെ ഓരോരുത്തരെയും ഒരുക്കണമേ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു ഓരോ ദിവസവും അങ്ങയോട് കൂടുതൽ അടുത്ത് ജീവിപ്പാൻ ഞങ്ങളെ സഹായിക്കണം ഹാലേലുയ്യ അവിടുന്ന് ഞങ്ങളെ സ്നേഹിക്കുന്ന നല്ല ദൈവമാണ് ഹാലേലുയ്യ അവിടുന്ന് ഞങ്ങളെ ഒരിക്കലും കൈവിടില്ല ഹാലേലുയ്യ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് വേണ്ടി ദൈവമാണ് ഹാലേലുയ്യ ഞങ്ങളെ ഇത്രത്തോളം കാത്തു സൂക്ഷിക്കുന്ന ദൈവത്തിന് സ്തോത്രം ചെയ്യുന്നു സ്തുതിക്കുന്ന കർത്താവെ ഒരു പ്രാവശ്യം കൂടെ കർത്താവെ ഞങ്ങൾ എല്ലാവരെയും സമർപ്പിക്കുന്നു ഹാലേലുയ്യ സമർപ്പണത്തോടു കൂടെ ജീവിപ്പാൻ ഞങ്ങളെ ഇടയാക്കണമേ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു കർത്താവെ ഞങ്ങൾ വളരെ ദൈവമേ ദൈവ ഭക്തിയോടും കർത്താവെ വിവേകത്തോടും കർത്താവെ ഈ ലോകത്തിന് അനുരൂപരാകാതെ ദൈവഹൃതത്തിനനുസരിച്ച് ജീവിപ്പാൻ ഞങ്ങളെ സഹായിക്കണമേ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു ഹാലേലുയ്യ വചന സംസാരിച്ച കർത്താവെ ദാസ്മി അവിടുത്തെ കരങ്ങൾ ഏൽപ്പിക്കുന്ന കർത്താവെ അവിടുന്ന് ദൈവമേ ഈ പ്രദേശത്തിലേക്ക് കൊണ്ടുവന്നതിന് വേണ്ടി സ്തോത്രം കർത്താവെ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് നല്ല വചനങ്ങളെ വിളമ്പി തരുവാൻ അവിടുന്ന് സഹായിക്കുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടി സ്തോത്രം കർത്താവെ ആ വചനങ്ങളൊക്കെ കേൾക്കുന്നത് ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ദൈവമേ ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഹൃദയത്തിൽ അത് ആഴമായി പതിയുവാനും അത് നിയന്ത്രിക്കുവാനും ഇടയാക്കണമേ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു ആ മണ്ണിൽ വീണ വിത്ത് പോലെ അത് ദൈവം വളരുവാൻ ഇടയാക്കണമേ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു അതിനെയൊക്കെ ഞങ്ങൾ അതിനുവേണ്ടിയൊക്കെ ഞങ്ങളെ ഒരുക്കണമേ ഹാലേലുയ്യ അതിനുവേണ്ടി ദൈവമേ കൂടുതലായിട്ട് കർത്താവിനോട് അടുത്തിരിപ്പാൻ ഞങ്ങളെ സഹായിക്കണമേ ആ മറിയ നല്ല അംശം തേടിയതുപോലെ അതുപോലെ അങ്ങയോട് അടുത്തിരിപ്പാൻ ഞങ്ങളെ സഹായിക്കണമേ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു ദൈവമേ ഉൾക്കണ്ണുകളെ തുറന്നതുപോലെ പൗലോസിതത്തിൻ ദൈവമേ ആ പ്രസംഗം കേട്ടപ്പോൾ അവിടെ ഉൾക്കണ്ണുകളെ തുറന്നതുപോലെ ഞങ്ങളുടെ കണ്ണുകളെയും തുറക്കണമേ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു ഹാലേലുയ്യ ദൈവമേ ആ ഗേഹസ്യയുടെ കർത്താവെ കണ്ണുകളെ തുറന്നതുപോലെ കർത്താവെ ഞങ്ങളുടെ കണ്ണുകളെയും തുറക്കണമേ അവിടുത്തെ ദൈവമേ ആ ദൈവമേ തേജസ് അറിയുവാൻ അവിടുത്തെ ശക്തി അറിയുവാൻ ഞങ്ങളെ ഓരോരുത്തരെയും അവിടുന്ന് ഒരുക്കണമേ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു ഹാലേലുയ്യ ആസ്മയും കുടുംബത്തെ ഒരു പ്രാവശ്യം കൂടെ അവിടുത്തെ കാര്യങ്ങൾ ഏൽപ്പിക്കുന്നു അവിടെ എല്ലാ ആവശ്യങ്ങളും കൂടെ ഇരിക്കണം കർത്താവെ ഒരു പ്രദേശമോ പ്രയാസം ഒന്നും ഉണ്ടാകാതെ അവരെ ഇവിടെ നില നിലനിർത്തിക്കൊണ്ട് മാറണമേ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു ഹാലേലുയ്യ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ഏറ്റവും അനുഗ്രഹപ്രദമായി തീരുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടി സ്തോത്രം കർത്താവെ കടന്നു വരുന്ന വന്നവരെ എല്ലാവരെയും അനുഗ്രഹിക്കണമേ എല്ലാവർക്കും വേണ്ടുന്ന എല്ലാ കൃപകളും കൊടുക്കണമേ ഹല്ലേലുയ്യ ഈ പ്രയാസ സമയത്ത് ദൈവമേ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ഒന്നിട്ട് കർത്താവിനെ സ്വീപ്പാൻ തരുന്ന നല്ല അവസരങ്ങൾക്ക് വേണ്ടി സ്തോത്രം ലഭിക്കുന്ന അവസരങ്ങളൊക്കെ ദൈവമേ ഞങ്ങൾ അത് ഒന്നും ദൈവമേ ഉപേക്ഷ വിചാരിക്കാതെ എടുക്കുവാൻ ഞങ്ങളെ സഹായിക്കണമേ എല്ലാത്തിലും ഉപരിയായിട്ട് എന്റെ കർത്താവിന്റെ വരവിനായിട്ട് ഒരുങ്ങുവാൻ ഞങ്ങളെ ഓരോരുത്തരെയും സഹായിക്കണമേ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്ന കർത്താവെ ഞങ്ങളുടെ എല്ലാ ആവശ്യങ്ങളും കർത്താവ് അറിയുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടി സ്തോത്രം ഓരോ ദിവസവും ഞങ്ങളെ ദൈവോത്സവമായിട്ട് അവിടെ നടത്തുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടി നന്ദിയോട് സ്തോത്രം സ്തോത്രം കർത്താവെ ഇന്ന് ദൈവമേ ആരാധനയിൽ കടന്നു വന്ന എല്ലാവരെയും കർത്താവിന്റെ കരുങ്ങിൽ ഏൽപ്പിക്കുന്നു ഞങ്ങളെ അനുഗ്രഹിക്കണമേ കൂടുതലായിട്ട് ശക്തീകരിക്കണമേ ഹാലേലുയ്യ ഞങ്ങൾ മാനവും മഹത്വം അവിടുത്തേക്ക് സകലേശ്വര നാമത്തിൽ താഴ്മയോടി ആചിക്കുന്ന കൃപയോട് കേൾക്കണമേ